Vsauce, Kevin here with 45 chicken nuggets, 63 cents, and 130 years of algorithmic evolution that means you wait as little time as possible in the checkout lane at the grocery store. Almost. You've been grinding in the mine all day with your pickaxe swinging from side to side, and the only thing that you value right now more than diamonds is a box full of sweet chicken nuggets and some delectable tangy dipping sauce. Your mom says that she'll get you as many nuggets as you want, but you want to make things a little difficult for her because she canceled your Realm subscription. So you ask her to order the largest number of nuggets that, due to available nugget configurations, is impossible for her to get. Which means that your new best friend is German mathematician Ferdinand Frobenius. In his late 1800s lectures, Frobenius toyed with a thought experiment that would change how we think about nuggets forever. The premise is simple. What's the largest integer that cannot be expressed as a combination of integers with the greatest common divisor of one? I told you it was simple. The answer is the Frobenius number. Let me explain. Let's say, hypothetically, that nuggets only come in fives and nines. Their greatest common divisor is one. If they only come in groups of fives or nines, then there are all sorts of small nugget orders you just can't make by combining them, like seven, 11, or 16. You can work out a table of possible combinations, but in 1882, English mathematician J.J. Sylvester, who was so important to developing how we think and talk about math that he coined basic terms like matrix and graph, came up with a simple formula to find the biggest number you can't make from two numbers that have a greatest common divisor of one. X times Y minus X minus why? So let's just plug in our five and our nine. Five times nine minus five minus nine equals 31. There's our nugget Frobenius. Because look, 32 is possible. That's just nine plus nine plus nine plus five. So is 33. Nine plus nine plus five plus five plus five equals 33. So is 34. Nine plus five plus five plus five plus five plus five equals 34. And so is every other number after the Frobenius. Having a greatest common divisor of one is key here because if the greatest common divisor is higher, like two, there can't be a Frobenius number at all. And the proof of that is in the nuggets. In the US, McDonald's only sells nuggets in boxes of four, six, 10, and 20. Because the greatest common divisor is two, any odd number, very small or very large, presents an impossible ordering combination. In America, you just can't order seven or 73,212,907 nuggets. No. But as Brady Heron of Number Files showed in 2012, the nugget situation is more complex in the United Kingdom. Since McDonald's in the UK served nuggets in quantities of six, nine and 20, Brady was able to stump the cashier with an order of 43 nuggets. The highest possible combination of six, nine and 20 that McDonald's couldn't possibly make. Because check it out, you can make 42 nuggets because six times seven equals 42. You can make 44 with 20 plus nine plus nine plus six, but no combination of six, nine and 20 will get you 43. However, you can make every number after 43. You can't make 37, 34, 31, 28, or 25 either, but 43 is the highest number you can't make. You can work out all the possibilities for three values of McNuggets by hand, and it doesn't take too long, but while there is a formula we used earlier to find the Frobenius with those two numbers, there's no simple formula for three variables or four or 44 or 7,218. There's just an algorithm that ranges from tedious to requiring a supercomputer. But who cares about chicken nugget combinations? Is it really that important to annoy someone at a McDonald's half hour outside of Barton in the Beans or to get your mom back for canceling realms? No. 
but it matters to anyone who uses money. Like everyone everywhere in the world. The concepts that Frobenius and Sylvester tackled are really about mathematical optimization. What can you do with a given set of numbers and how easily can you do it? That's at the heart of how we use coins and decide on their denominations. Under our current systems in places like the US and the EU, we're greedy when we make change. Literally. We use what's called a greedy algorithm to process transactions. It's a crude, common sense way of approaching change. Basically, we select the biggest denominations of coins to get close to a number without going over, then the next biggest and then the next until we have the amount that we need. In the US, our common coins are 0 0.01, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, and 0.25, a penny, a nickel, a dime, and a quarter. So to get to 63 cents, we'd select two quarters, one dime, and three pennies. That's 63 cents. That seems like it has to be the best possible way with the best possible numbers, but are they really the optimal denominations? In 2003, computer scientist Jeffrey Shallot put it to the test. He found that in the 1, 5, 10, 25 American system, the average number of coins given as change in a transaction was 4.7. But by removing the 10 cent piece and replacing it with an 18 cent piece, Shallot found that optimization increased markedly to just 3.89 coins per transaction. Knowing that removing a simple coin like a dime surely wouldn't be popular, he then wondered what additional denomination would simplify transactions. And he found that adding a 32 cent piece would reduce the average transaction down to 3.46 coins. For the Canadian system, Shallot's addition of an 83 cent piece would reduce the average transaction by about a coin and a half. But how easily can we even think about the world in terms of 83s and 18s? And how difficult is it not to be greedy? If we had an 18 cent coin, the best way to make 54 cents in change would be three 18s and not our go-to greedy mindset of two quarters and four pennies. By employing Shallot's optimal denominations, we'd cut the number of coins in that transaction by half. But how natural would that be? Is it possible that being inefficient mathematically can be more efficient in real life. Yes. If you want to get wacky with me, it's possible to ensure that every single change transaction between one and 100 cents uses no more than just two coins. Seriously. You just need denominations of 1, 3, 4, 9, 11, 16, 20, 25, 30, 34, 39, 41, 46, 47, 49, and 50. With those, you can make change for anything with some combination of just two coins. But instead of dealing with four common types of coins in the US, you'd be dealing with 16 that have no obvious rhyme or reason for their denominations. We even used to have a more mathematically optimized coin system, but rolled it back for simplicity's sake. The US used a two cent piece between 1864 and 1873, and even had three cent pieces between 1851 and 1889. Shallot's calculation showed that the presence of a two or three cent piece reduces the average coins in a transaction by 0.8. It turns out that having to calculate with extra denominations is more inconvenient than carrying around some additional pennies. With fewer coin types, you're not fumbling around looking for specific coins and holding up the checkout line at the grocery store. It turns out that sometimes what's best for math isn't best for everyday life. In 1870, French military engineer Charles Renard proposed a series of preferred numbers for the world to use with, well, nearly everything. The idea was that simple systems could streamline how we think about the world, and a rough rounded variation of Renard's R3 shows up in the 125 system of currencies in Europe and China, while the US and Canada use a modified 
125. Is that heuristic a basic set of rules to help us process our numerical world, the mathematically optimal way to do everything? Well, no, it isn't. It's pretty good, but it's not the best possible result in terms of math. It's just the best possible result in terms of people. In most of my videos, I like to extract the hidden mathematical beauty in everyday life, but for this one, it turned out to kind of be the opposite. Perfectly optimal algorithms don't always play nicely with how our brains work and how we live our lives. There are practical limits to how we can apply our advancing mathematical knowledge to our daily lives, and that's okay. Because whether it's nugget boxes or pockets full of coins, what's best mathematically may not necessarily be best for the human experience. Unless you really, really, really want 43 chicken nuggets. And as always, thanks for watching.